Here's the transmission removed from our test buggy. You can see it's an early four bolt Liberty transmission. The nose cone is not quite as nice as what we do these days. Now this is the transmission is directly removed from the test buggy. It's been run by an EJ25 quad cam engine, non-turbo, run for 18 months and 13,000 kilometers. This is the oil coming out of that transmission that has not been changed since its initial installation some year and a half ago. You can see very few fine pieces on the magnetic uh, sump plug. Uh, so that was a pretty good sign. I thought I'd drain the oil directly in front of the video so you can see. Obviously it's a little darker than brand new oil, but it uh, drains very easily. There's no big chips of material coming down and out from the transmission runs easily. I thought I'd put my hand in it and see there's no grit. It looks pretty fine. It doesn't stink. So for 13,000 kilometers without an initial oil change, that's a good sign. Uh, this transmission was filled with 3.9 liters of Castrol 75W90 uh, transmission gear oil. That's an AP5 specification made specifically for Subaru pipewood transaxles. Uh, so you can see it hasn't lost any oil. It's uh, around four liters back out into the container. This is uh, just all live on the camera so you can see I haven't made anything up or changed it and see the quality of it. it a bit just to make sure there's no grains in it or lumps and pieces and I thought the next thing that I would do is pour it out into a, a bucket just so you can get a, a vision of exactly the quality of the pieces that are there and see if there's anything any chunks that have been dropped into the oil or anything just to give us a look as you can see it strains pretty clearly obviously it's darker somewhat darker than when you first put fresh oil in but just tipping it from that catch bucket into a, a larger bucket it all seems to pour pretty smoothly and there's no pieces visible within the transmission oil or suspended into it as we get to the bottom it's always good to see whether or not there's silver sliver or grainy pieces or so on but as you can see when I when I drain it and I tried to make the last piece of oil slowly so you can see if anything stays in the container you can see that it's very clean oil with no sediment or pieces in it very well presented so i'm quite happy with that result for 13,000 kilometers of testing and that's street use and sand use jumping it in the dunes and that's with an lsd uh, obx lsd fitted also now having a look at the super flanges they're nice and tight on the splines but haven't produced any rocking or so on. You can see that we've had this transmission in the sand. You can see there's a little bit of backlash there, which is very much within normal specs, particularly for the OBX torque sensing type limited slip transmission. So very pleased with that. And now we thought we'll strip this transmission uh, in front of you. So this is fresh out of the car with the oil freshly drained of you, as you've seen. So now we're removing the uh, reverse switch and neutral switch from the back of the housing. This is a non-turbo style gear set as well. So we thought we'll take the uh, end housing off first and in particular have a look at whether or not there's any sediment left in there and look at the quality of fifth gear uh, after it's been removed. Now fifth gear uh, needs to have a good splash oil feed from it and it's important that the gearbox is installed in the vehicle as close to level as possible and not overfilled or underfilled so that fifth gear gets a good splash of oil and also feeds an oil feed for the main shaft. Uh, this particular nose cone, as you can see, this is a late model 758 nose cone fitted to an earlier model 754 transmission, or 752 transmission even. And uh, this is before we had our super plug. Uh, 
Uh, so this has got a piece of aluminium TIG welder onto the back and then DEVCON to make sure that there are no leaks out from the main super plug area and from the strange shaped area on the right hand side there. So remembering this was one of our initial test transmissions. These gearboxes are fairly simple to pull apart. I think this entire one was done in 12 minutes to pull apart and that's when after that is when the work really begins on modifying cases and making sure the gear stacks are good and so on. So now we'll just remove the nose cone with a copper hammer so we don't damage anything. I'll have a look at the quality of the components inside. Taking off the nose cone. Now if you look inside the nose cone at the bottom, you can see that there are no chunks in the oil. The oil is nice and clean. Nothing's burnt. There's no sediment there. It's all good. Fifth gear looks nice and clean and good. Everything is in its place and the way it should be. That's the one side and then the other side. So that's the uh, fifth gear on the input shaft. Fifth gear on the driven shaft. It's all very clean. Nothing's moved. Very pleased with that. So now we move to stripping the rest of the transmission. Uh, it's a fairly simple process. Removing the uh, horseshoe, which holds the input shaft in its correct position and then stripping all the through bolts from the transmission so we can break the case halves apart we found that the OBX limited slip differential was a good addition to this transmission. This is a 4.1 final drive ratio transmission and the torque sensing differential worked the whole way through, worked well on sand, worked well on straight, uh, didn't engage or disengage too roughly, it was very smooth in its engagement and we thought it was pretty good value for money, certainly providing as much traction as you could ever want on the sand and straight. Uh, 31 inch tires, rear tires, fitted to this particular test buggy, which is a full length beetle pan, probably around 1100 kilograms, so 2300, 2400 pounds, straight licensed. The other uh, point to this particular test was we fitted it with the older style transmission case and the older style gear set probably to give it the weakest combination of parts just to make sure that it withstood the test of time and withstood the abuse that we would give it going through the sand dunes and jumping. We figured that if the weakest combination of gears held up to everything then certainly stronger combinations of gears and turbo gear sets and hybrid turbo gear sets would definitely be able to uh, take up any amount of abuse that we could throw at it. So now just removing the last of the through bolts, large and small size through bolts. Uh, and there are four bolts that hold the input shaft retainer in place. You can't split the transmission without removing these four bolts. Well, you certainly have to remove two of them. We tend to remove four. You can see the, uh, the two-wheel drive lock in place there on the driven shaft. Super spool. That locks it into two-wheel drive and replaces the center differential that you would have if you, this stayed as a four-wheel drive transmission. Three bolts. Okay, 
and then we're going to split the case again using the copper hammer rather than using screwdrivers to try and prise the case halves apart because that can lead to damaging the case halves. We use a copper hammer to hit against this tab here on the bottom part to help split the rear of the case, the front of the case in the, in the Volkswagen situation and also tap it up near the bell housing area and tap it without damaging anything and that's split the case there. So now we can lift the case half off and most importantly have a look if there's any residue in there and the quality of, and cleanliness of the parts within the case. So immediately within the case you can see there's clean oil in the bottom, there's no bits and pieces, nothing left in the bottom of the case. That one was a hand machine case that I, that I did, not a machine case and uh, nice and clean just like brand new and if you have a look at all the gears the gears are all nice and sharp all the dogs are sharp no pieces lying in the bottom of it everything's nicely intact so we remove the differential center now with the ring gear attached to it and have a look at the pinion the pinion bearing is nice and smooth no sharp edges the contact patch is very nice, it's certainly where it needs to be. Apologies for the focus, the video camera isn't great at focusing on a macro level. We'll just have a look at the ring gear now, we'll move this into the light so you can see the contact patch a bit better. I'll spin it for you. See there's no sharp edges in the contact patch, it's really nice. It's a little bit hard to see on a uh, on a video camera but both sides of the of the teeth are very very nice it certainly hasn't softened or had any problems from the abuse that we've given it jumping it in the air and landing on 31 inch tires so very pleased with that result we also have a look at the shift forks now that we've removed the gear stacks from the case the pads on the shift forks are still like brand new very well intact and not worn so good shift now what we thought we'd do is split the OBX limited slip differential and have a look at the insides. The bearing races and cups were, were very good, there was no problems there, just like a factory Subaru transmission. So I've taken, taken the retainer bolts out from this limited slip differential centre. The bolts were still fine and now we've split this torque sensing limited slip differential. Take a look at the parts inside. Everything was clean in there, there was no debris, there was no burnt looking oil, there was no grinding parts or anything, that looked fine. And we take a couple of these worm gears out, have a look at them, the faces on the worm gears were all good, there was nothing sharp or worn on those worm gears. These are what provide the torque sensing and the locker, they look good and were clean. And this, is, this was previously unopened. We opened it to inspect it, put it back together and then installed it in the transmission. We didn't make any modifications to the housing or clean it up or deburr anything. Um, and this is the worm gears on the other side. They were all very good. There was no sharp edges or break-offs on any of those. Now we take out the center, there's Bellevue washers in the center. We did notice that these washers have become squashed and difficult to move. And as I remove a couple of these washers, you'll see that there is a crack that's developed in one of these washers. So certainly there's the crack there in that washer. Certainly we would recommend fitting upgraded washers to these limited slip differentials before installing in your car.